Now, for more on the EU's economic future, I'm joined by the EU ambassador to the US, David O'Sullivan. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So, David, the reality of Brexit is fast approaching as Theresa May prepares to trigger Article 50. What is the mood in the EU right now about this? Well, I think we deeply regret the British decision to leave. Uh, we would have wished them to decide otherwise. But we respect the democratic decision of the British people. Uh, they will, as you say, uh, trigger the formal process of uh, beginning the process of leaving the European Union next week. And we will enter into those negotiations, I think, in the spirit of, of goodwill to try to get the best uh, solution possible in the best interests of the, the UK, but of course, most importantly, the best interests of the, the other 27 member states. Now, of course, countries that do a lot of trade with the UK are also watching this and, and wondering what the repercussions will be for them. How do you think, especially in the US, this is being received in terms of what's happening with Brexit and the potential repercussions for the EU? Well, I think people in the United States are asking themselves, what does this mean? And unfortunately, to a certain extent, we can't be very clear about what it means because we don't know precisely what will be the arrangements between the UK and the EU and what arrangements the UK will then wish to make with other countries when they finally leave the European Union. So there's unfortunately a, a certain amount of uncertainty. Uh, the disadvantage for the UK is that they are leaving access to the world's largest and richest single market in order to try to renegotiate partial access to that market. Uh, for the rest, uh, we will at 27 still continue to be one of the largest economies in the world, a $15 trillion economy, uh, one of the largest single markets and wealthiest single markets. So we, we believe we will continue to be an attractive destination for foreign investment and particularly United States investment, which we greatly value. Now, it's certainly an interesting position to be in. A lot of people just a few years ago were looking at Greece, expecting them to be the first country to end up leaving the EU. How are they faring so far? Greece is actually doing quite well. They uh, will grow at about 2.5% this year, and we hope uh, at nearly a 3.5% next year. So I think they really have turned a corner. They've taken some very tough decisions, and I think we have to recognize that the Greek people have had to endure quite a lot of sacrifice. They've also had the refugee crisis, which has compounded uh, some of their difficulties. But I think the Greek government have been very courageous in making the structural adjustments, and they're now starting to get the benefit of that, and that will continue to... Uh, uh, improve uh, as the years go by. Now, we have been looking at this notion of this multi-speed EU where some economies are growing well, other countries like Italy struggling with their, with their banking debt. So when it comes to that, what do we know about the likelihood of perhaps the next potential countries to leave the EU, either whether by choice or by falling out of the EU because of high debt? Well, I don't think anyone's going to fall out of the EU. It's not like a bed that you fall out of by mistake. Uh, I think countries can make that conscious choice. And, and one important point to bear in mind is that we are a democratic union, uh, and we have this possibility that if a country wants to leave, they may. The British have chosen to exercise that option. Opinion polls in the rest of the 27 would not indicate that there is any popular support for any other country leaving the European Union anytime soon. In fact, after the Brexit vote in the United Kingdom, uh, support for and enthusiasm for the European Union peaked uh, uh, and reached all-time highs in most of the other countries. And David, speaking to that, are there any countries that, even despite Brexit and what's going on, perhaps a little bit of uncertainty in the EU, other countries that are interested in joining the bloc? Absolutely. We have uh, uh, a number of countries with whom we're actively negotiating, in, including Turkey uh, and a number of Balkan countries. Uh, and we know that there are many other countries would be interested uh, in potentially joining. But of course, uh, for the moment, we're just dealing with those who are immediately candidate countries. And the, the process of joining the EU is complicated and does take time. Now, we know that um, Ireland's economy was the fastest growing in the bloc um, for the third straight year um, as of 2016. A lot of people really do see it as a success story. How does that compare with how the rest of the EU is performing? Well, I, I think Ireland went through a very difficult period in the immediate aftermath of the, of the financial crisis and the crash, had to take also some very tough decisions, as did people in Portugal and, and Spain and, and, and Greece, which we've already talked about. Uh, they are now reaping the benefits of that. And of course, that coming from a lower base, it gives them a higher percentage uh, increase. So I think the Irish can be very proud of what they've managed to achieve. But I think, as your report showed earlier, there's good news across all of Europe. Uh, the Eurozone is growing. We've had 15 successive quarters of positive growth, and this now the one, one of the highest growths. Uh, I was just at South by Southwest in Austin, the, the, the tech festival, where everyone was very excited by what's happening in Europe, for example, with the startups uh, and, and the, the high tech industry. So I, I think uh, Europe has really turned a corner after the, the difficulties of the financial crisis and the uh, crash. And I think uh, the economic future for Europe is actually quite bright.
Now let's look at that. You mentioned things like innovation. So what's your outlook for the, for the European Union? Well, I think the European Union uh, has been quietly getting on with some very important projects. Uh, energy Union to unify the, the energy grid across Europe, which has involved substantial investment in infrastructure, but also in really making sure that, uh, for example, if you get surplus energy produced by renewables in the Iberian Peninsula, that there's an interconnector into France and to the, the rest of the European energy grid. Uh, the digital single market, which is a, really a revolution uh, in terms of the way we're going to do business, and capital markets union to make venture capital much more available precisely for those startups. So these are very important projects that we've been working on, which don't often get commented on against some of the, the more obvious crises that we've had to deal with. And I think we are really building a very viable and vibrant economy for the future. Something very important to note, obviously Brexit does tend to overshadow a lot of these things. So thank you so much for your insights. The EU ambassador to the U.S., David O'Sullivan.